Hey there, I'm Coach Michael Burt, the Super Coach, every week coming to you live from the Greatness Factory. And I really want to do three things for you. I want to multiply your life. I want to multiply your money. And I want to multiply your business. And fresh off a brand new trip to New York City, the Big Apple, I took my coaching message. I took my point of view. And man, did I learn a lot. And a lot about this concept I wrote about person of interest. How do you cultivate a point of view that is valuable and compelling in the world and how do you go out there and share it on the biggest stages in the world i believe status sales i believe money follows attention i believe money follows circulation i believe money follows energy and i believe influence is the currency you're looking for today on super coach i'm going to break down how you become a person of interest how to become the person other people want a piece of and cannot live without. You're watching Super Coach, and I'm Coach Michael Burke. Hey guys, this is Coach Michael Burke. I am so glad you joined me for Super Coach. I believe a good coach can change your life. I believe a good coach will have conversations with you you don't want to have, make you do some things you don't want to do, help you become something you didn't think you could become. You see, you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. You can't reach your own potential without the help of another person helping you break through those ceilings of success. I'm Coach Michael Bird, and I'm going to find the kryptonite in your life, and I'm going to do it on this show, Super Coach. Hey there, Coach Michael Burt, Super Coach. Coming into your life every week. Excited to be with you. I've been on a great trip. Great trip, Peter O'Neill, Shane Ray, all my boys out there, Travis Perus. Great trip to New York City. And man, A, it was an unbelievable trip for my wife and I. And what, what good is it to build a business, work hard, if you can't go and spend a couple days in New York City prior to the big deal, man? Monday was a work day for me. It was a, it was a use stress day for me. It was a big day for me. So my wife and I flew to New York City on, on Saturday. We got to spend Saturday. We went to 43rd. I think that's the name of the restaurant that rotates around and sees the whole view. And then we're able to get up on Sunday and go to Chelsea Market and have time there. And then on Monday, had the big interview on Fox. Fox, uh, big day, good day, New York. Lots and lots of people watch that. And, uh, and then got to spend time with my media coaches, two market media. So Coach got some coaching. And, man, did I pick up some great – things for you. And what we're trying to do, what I'm going to teach you today in the show is how do you become a person of interest? How do you cultivate a point of view that is interesting, that is compelling? I made a pitch to Good Morning America while I was there, and I learned a lot, and I got all this feedback. But I'm constantly thinking, years ago, I wrote this book called Person of Interest. How do you become a person other people want a piece of and cannot live without. And, and it was funny on New York, on Good Day New York, I was after Tony Bennett, a segment on Tony Bennett, and before the guy on Top Shelf. So I was in between these two people that are already major celebrities, and then there's Coach, man, and then there's Coach with my point of view. And I'll tell you this, even the producer said to me in the green room when he's putting my makeup on, Jack, they said, you know, Coach, we're a little bit skeptical we heard that you were this rising star out there, this coachypreneur, this super coach. But to be honest with you, we didn't know who you were, obscurity. We didn't know what you had to say. We didn't know if you deserved to be on a stage this big until we dug into your content. They said, when we watched your videos and we listened to your podcast and we looked at your body of work and we saw that you had written 12 books, we knew, coach, that you had a point of view that needed to be heard in the world. And I hit it off great with the producer. We spent a long time talking backstage. And man, um, it was a great, great experience. So how do you become a person of interest? Because let me tell you something. You don't get on a show in front of millions of people if you don't have a point of view. If you don't have something compelling. You don't get a, you don't get a segment on Good Morning America if you don't have something relevant. So first, got to sell you on a few things. And I would just ask you this. Do you have the credibility you need to sell to bigger and bigger markets? Do you have this? Do you have a point of view that is differentiated, that is not commoditized? And I realized when I was in New York City that, man, everybody needs a coach in life is a, is a great concept. Is it compelling enough? Is it strong enough? Hey, listen, person of interest is a huge concept. There's lots of people who want to be people of interest in the world. So, so I got to sell you on a couple of beliefs that I have, and I believe status sales. 
I believe money follows attention. I believe money follows energy. I believe that uh, people don't talk about common things. They only talk about uncommon things. So the first question the producer asked me is, uh, Coach, is it true that you really did 41 speaking engagements in one day? I said, it's true, man. I spoke to 41 businesses in one day. Man, that's interesting. If you want to cheapen anything, just make it common. That which is common is not talked about. That which is rare is valuable. And so for you, I got to help you understand and help you create a framework on how you drive up your person of interest score. Because in a world like New York City, if you got boring ideas, they get crushed, man. They get crushed. And you got to have something compelling to say. I got to help you separate yourself from the pack. So if you notice some of the things that I do, I create these frameworks. I create big concepts, monster producer, person of interest, million dollar follow up, crumbs, zebras and cheetahs. This ain't no practice life. And then once I get have that point of view, then I shove that point of view out to the market in as many ways as I can. Audio, video, face-to-face, social media, database. And I'm only looking for people who are looking for me, right? I'm only looking for people that believe the same things that I do. So when you're out there in the world and you're trying to say this, hey, I'm in a commoditized market, which means I'm selling the same thing everybody else is selling. You know how many coaches are out there in the world? So they were asking me, what do you think about Wayne Dyer, who's no longer with us? What do you think about Tony Robbins? What do you think about Stephen Covey? What do you think about Jim Collins? What do you think about Marcus Buckingham? What makes you different, coach? than everybody else. Well, I'm a former championship coach who has an entrepreneurial mind. I built my own greatness factory where we manufacture greatness. If you watched that interview I did yesterday, Rosanna, the host, when I talked about making work a greatness factory and everybody building their own little greatness factory, watch her body language and optics pick up because she was like, that's good, man. That is so good right there. So for you, when you become this person of interest in the market, What you're really doing is driving your stock up. Now, when you have a point of view, POV, you got something valuable to say. It's differentiated. You say it a number of ways. What happens is is people begin to be attracted to that point of view. They They become interested in that point of view. They start saying, I believe the same things he does. I'd like a relationship. Do you believe they're one step closer to doing business to you? Yes or no? The answer is yes. So if you don't have a point of view, you're a commodity. If you're a commodity, know this. When two opinions are the same, one of those opinions is unnecessary. So I don't care if you're selling fences. I don't care if you're selling uh, a heating and cooling. I don't care if you're selling mortgages. I don't care if you're selling real estate. You first have to start with having something valuable to say. That is based on your unique past, your unique experiences, your unique mentors, and, and what you've been exposed to in the world. You know, I went to New York City and brought back all of these ideas. See, see, they're moving 30, 40 times faster in New York City than we are in in Nashville, Tennessee. The speed is the intensity. The everything is faster, harder, quicker. The velocity is moving quicker. You got to think faster. So if you don't have a point of view and you don't have any street cred, your person of interest score is very, very low. And I got to drive your person of interest score up. So let me give you some kryptonite. And in segment two, I'm going to show you the six ingredients you need to be a POI. Here's what's happening right now. You chase it versus attract it. You don't see the correlation between being a person of interest and more opportunity. If you don't see the, you don't see the correlation between status and money. You don't see the correlation between you want more people to know you because there's more people you can sell. So what you're doing is you're playing very, very, very small and you're using old antiquated selling methods. One to one, knocking on doors. If you're out there knocking on doors, man, come on. Man. That's one of the worst sales models in the world. With the power of the internet, Facebook Live, bigger cities, television, this is crazy, man. You don't see the, I gotta get you to see a correlation between more eyeballs and more opportunity. Today we're talking person of interest. When I come back in segment number two, I'll show you the, the secrets of cultivating a point of view and the ingredients that you're going to be in possession of that other people are going to want. I'm Coach Michael Burt, and you're watching Super Coach. Here's kryptonite number one. You've hit a plateau in your business because you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. Here's what we can't do in 2017. We can't go back out and do the exact same thing we did this year. 
That's the purpose of today's show. In segment number two, I'm gonna give you the 2.2 millimeters of strategy change. I'm gonna tell you what my new strategies are, what my new divisions are, how I'm gonna generate a couple hundred thousand more of money, maybe a couple million more dollars of money. And then it's about doing one thing, baby. It's about taking action. Welcome back, Super Coach. Every week here at the Greatness Factory, when are you going to step into your greatness? We're hosting a retreat in Seaside, Florida. I'm going to be doing commercials on this tomorrow. Seaside, Florida, September 23rd through the 26th, September 27th through the 30th. You can pick one of those two retreats. Come spend four days with me in one of the most prestigious places in the world right now. Got a big house. Got a lot of people coming. It's going to be a cool experience for you. Come down to Florida and join us. Shout out to Leo Martinez, Matt Crane, Shane Ray, Katrina Waldrop, James Jarrett, Tom Love, Peter O'Neill. Peter's coming down to Florida with us. Tom Love, you need to come too, man. Four days, Seaside, Florida. Tom says having something to say is just as valuable as having somebody to say it to. Uh, the Big Kahuna is going to be with us. Shane Ray, just call Aloha.com. Nothing worse than being stuck in the middle of summer and your air conditioning unit ain't working. Shane Ray is now pulled out his own point of view. He's creating a point of view. It doesn't have to be boring. Just call Big Kahuna. Just call Aloha.com for all of your heating and servicing needs. Shane, Shane, come up to me and said, I need to be there, Coach. I need to be down there in Florida. Well, yes, you do. So email info at CoachBurt.com. $2,500. That covers your lodging, your lunch, the masterminds. We can only take about 10 people. That does cover, cover two people to $2,500 if you're interested in that. You need to sign up, and I will show you in person in Florida how to become a person of interest we're talking about today. Now, how do I know if you're not a person of interest, Meg Smith? How do I know what your person of interest score is, Big Kahuna? How do I know? Incoming demand. Incoming demand. So here's how I know. If you're not getting enough attention for your business, that's one way I know you're not a POI yet. If you got low status, that's another way I know you're not a person of interest. If you got low energy, there's not a lot of energy around your brand, that's how I know you're not a person of interest. So people of interest have something valuable to say. They, ha they are in possession of something other people want. Go back and watch last week's show. What, what, what is it that you got that other people would want? Melinda Dawn Kelly, she's going to be down there with us in Florida. Excited to have her in Monster Producer as well. And Here's the deal. People of interest got something to say. What did Tony Bennett say? I, I'm going to do it what? Was it my way? I'm going to do it my way, man. What did the guy on top shelf say? Man, he's got a, he's got a particular way he cooks the food. You got a point of view. So let me give you some ingredients of people of interest. Number one, they got some specialized knowledge. They know something other people don't know. Where did that knowledge come from? Their past. They got some specialized skill. They can do something other people can't do. They got some specialized desire. When you really study big-time people of interest, Matt Crane, they don't practice a little bit more than other people. They practice thousands of hours more. You know what's funny about that interview on Good Day New York? If you haven't watched it, we'll put it, we'll put it out there in the links. I didn't remember what I said on there. I had to go back and watch the interview to know what I said. You know why? I was in such a zone. I told my wife, it's muscle memory. I've said this stuff over and over and over for so many times. When they asked those questions, it just came out. That's effort, right? It was muscle memory. You know, like in the old days, like when you're on sports and you shoot so many free throws that it's natural. You shoot so many times it's natural. When I was doing that interview, it was natural to me. I just pivot like a white rapper. I just roll it off, right? I'm just ready. You throw it at me, I'm ready. You know, they didn't ask me one question that was on the script. Every question I prepared for in that interview, they didn't ask one of those. Not one time did they ask one of those questions. They were all over the place with the interviews. I had to just be ready and pivot. So, so people of interest have specialized knowledge. What's yours? People of interest have specialized skills. What's yours? People of interest have specialized desire. That means they got big engines and a long obedience in the same direction. People of interest have, an, have a contagious confidence about them. They are transferring that confidence to other people. You can't have this if you got low energy. You can't have this if you don't have knowledge. 
People of interest also have high likability, high likability, and guess what they got? They got a point of view. What is my point of view? Everybody needs a coach in life. Attract business versus chase it. Million dollar follow up on your dreams. Build your own million dollar machine. Look different and run faster. We all reach a static state in life. These are all points of view. Now, what am I doing? What are you paying me for? You're paying for my point of view. What are people buying my books for? For my point of view. What are people in Monster Producer for? For my point of view. Why did that high school hire me? Because of my point of view on winning a championship. See, without a point of view, and I cannot stress this enough, guys, we are commodities. And a commodity is, man, I can get you anywhere. So why do I need you? If two opinions are the same, one of those opinions is unnecessary. So you got to be an expert. You got to develop an opinion. And, and, and the more controversial the opinion, the better. If, if I made any mistake in that interview, number one, I should have taken more control of the interview and push them to my million dollar machine monster producer. And, and I should have, instead of just being nice, I should have, I should have said, hey, man, if there's a person out there in the world that wants coaching that's in a static state, pick up the phone right now and call a super coach, man, because I'm going to get you to a much higher level of performance. Well, you can't do that if you don't have confidence and you don't have a point of view. So where are you missing? Is it specialized knowledge? Is it specialized skill? Is it uncommon desire? Is it contagious confidence? Is it deep networks? Or you say, look, coach, I don't have a point of view. My first business coach taught me this. Until you become a big name in the world, position by concept. Create killer concepts that other people are interested to. Now, when you become Tony Robbins, you can walk in and say, I'm Tony Robbins. But until you become Tony Robbins, Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, somebody at, with massive name recognition, Donald Trump, you got to sell the concepts, okay? And that's a big takeaway from today. Let me give you some kryptonite. That's the one thing holding you back. Good, Thank goodness you got a good coach, man. Thank goodness you got a good coach, Matt Crane. You have commoditized skill set that we can get anywhere. It's not specialized. Listen, heart surgeons make more than general practitioners. And you know why? Very special skill set. Start thinking of yourself as I, I, I can become the number one person in the world in this little space right here. You're watching Super Coach. When I come back in the final segment, I'm going to tell you how to sell to strangers because once you sold to your family and your friends and your cousins and your kids, now you got to sell to somebody outside your circle. You got to get on a boat, train, subway. You got to go take your message to a lot more people, guys. That's why the Super Coach is in your life. You're watching Super Coach. Come on back in the final segment. You don't know what strategy changes to make. So you choose the wrong ones that are not multipliers. A lot of people come into 2017, they make a little tweak here, a little tweak there, but it's low value. I want things where you exert energy here and get a huge return here. And there are things, we call those things multipliers. You're looking for things that will drastically enhance the business. Now, like I said, we come back in our final segment, we're going to get into what some of those things were are, and I'm going to share some things with you that we're going to be doing at Michael Bird Enterprises to get that 2.2 millimeters of change to go out there and crush our goals in 2017. Welcome back, Super Coach. Meg Smith said she pivots like a white rapper. That's what she said she liked. Boy, hope you're doing great, Meg. You always had a point of view, girl, ever since I've ever known you. Rondell Clark's on here with us. Rondell's got a point of view, Face It Fitness. Okay, listen, with no point of view, you can't be a person of interest. Do you have something to say or not? Having something to say, right, Tom Love, is just as valuable as having somebody to say it too. You got to draw a correlation between status and money, status and opportunity. So I was thinking about this. I could have been on Channel 4 here in Nashville. There's 1.9 million people in, in Middle Tennessee. Maybe there's 50,000 people watching the show. Or I could be in New York City where there's 6 million people. Does that create opportunity? Yes or no? What about the residual? What about the video? What about the Facebooks? What about the pictures? What about the status? What about, the, what about all of that stuff? How much is that worth? How much is having a best-selling book worth to you? How much is it worth going out and having the top clientele in your market worth to you? 
It's all perception, right? People of interest have high status. Go back and see what my buddy Tom, Tom, uh, uh, Tommy Davidson says. Status sales. It does sell. You show me the top real estate agents and they got the highest status. You show me the top mortgage originators. They got the highest status. They're well known. The word famous means well known uh, by many. It means renowned. It means celebrated. So, so let me get back to this point about selling to strangers. Because a lot of people hear this. i got to sell to my circle of influence, my sphere of influence. I get so sick of hearing this. you got to sell to your sphere of influence. Well, if you don't know but five people, you ain't got many people to sell to. Once you sell to all your local buddies and your family. I remember back in the early days when I would get involved in multi-level marketing and all these things. And I'd go back and get my mama to buy it from me. And, you know, I, I, I didn't have anybody to sell to. Well, what if you had millions of people to sell to? Well, you do when you cultivate a point of view that other people are interested in. You got, you're in possession of something they want. What is it? Knowledge, skill, desire, confidence, likability, networks, energy. Okay? So, so I got to come back around to this concept of selling to strangers. Yesterday in New York City, I was selling to people who didn't know me. I was selling to strangers. And I couldn't sell to those strangers if I didn't have a point of view. What's the point of view? You can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. And so for you, you may not have this point of view yet. You may be selling to very small audiences. And how, how do I know you're not a person of interest? You don't have enough attention. You got low status. You got very little leads. And you got low energy. All of this equates to not a person of interest, okay? You're obscure. And obscurity is your number one problem, no matter what anybody tells you. It's just, you may be really good, but not enough people know it. So let me finish this off today with this. What do I know about people of interest? When I wrote the book, Person of Interest, if you never bought this copy, uh, Person of Interest, you got to buy this book, man. You, you got to pick it up at CoachBird.com. It's very powerful. There's MP3 there. But, but this book was ahead of its time. Because what I was saying is, we should all aspire to be people of interest. So what do people of interest do? Number one, they get people to a much better state in their life. They are in the transformation business. It's not transactional. It's totally transformational, which means through a relationship with me, I get you to a much better state in your life. Let me put it this way. When I'm with you, I feel better about me. If I feel worse about me when I'm with you, then guess what I don't give you? I don't give you any of my time and energy and resources. When I'm with you, do I feel better about me? Because let me tell you what, when I'm with you, I feel like I can do anything. When I'm with you, I dream bigger. When I'm with you, my confidence is higher. When I'm with you, I'm in a positive, upbeat, motivating posture versus a defensive and contracting mindset. When I'm with you, I can do anything. What if you made people feel that way? What if you made people feel like they can do anything? What if you showed them the way to do it? Well, you become a person of interest. So what a good person of interest does is it gives you clarity. They give you clarity. They give you direction. They give you energy. They give you confidence. And more than anything, they give you methodology. They show you how to transform your life, your business, your everything. They have something, Peter O'Neill, that other people want. And other people are willing to pay for what it is they got. Even if they can just get close to it, if they could just get proximity to it, they could just get around it. You know, I spent about an hour and a half spending time with one of our customers named Stephen Forrest from New York City. He met me at the hotel and we spent about an hour and a half me just looking at his business, me just looking at where his missing structure, me just saying, I, I think you can do this. I think you can do this. I think you can do this because you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. You may be sitting on acres of diamonds, but you don't even know it. So I got to help you cultivate. So what's your homework assignment from today's show? Number one, what is your point of view? Is it compelling? I pitched an idea to Good Morning America while I was there. They said it ain't compelling enough. I pitched three more ideas since I've been back. Ain't compelling enough. I'm trying to find an idea that will affect millions of stay-at-home moms because that's who watches Good Morning America. And if I can bring them an idea that affects millions of people, that millions of, of viewers would want to watch it, then they'll have me on the show over and over and over again, which will expose me to a lot of strangers. But what if I don't have a point of view that's strong enough? Is, it, is your point of view compelling enough? And if it's not, I came home from New York City going, I got to create stronger concepts. Like I think my concept crumbs is a strong concept. Is it big enough? I don't know. I don't know if it's big enough or not, but it needs to be actionable. 
It needs to have a, it need to have some sting to it. It needs to be something that lots of people would want. And if you study great people, typically their first or second or third idea was not big enough concepts. I even look at Cardone when Selder Survival was not a big enough concept. Closer Survival Guy was not a big enough concept. If you're not first, you're last. Was not a big enough concept. What was a big concept was 10x. Be obsessed or be average. And you put all these ideas out there, and then you come back, right? Personal of interest was a huge concept for me. may even be bigger than everybody needs a coach in life. It's a huge concept, okay? Million-dollar follow-up is a big concept. Million-dollar machine. These are big concepts. These are points of view. And without the point of view, Tracy Tucker, without the point of view, Dale Childers, we're just out there peddling the same old thing everybody else is peddling. You're just peddling the same old thing, man. So you got to go to work. Let me give you some kryptonite. Tom Love, thank you very much for all the positive love you send me, man. I appreciate you. Tom Love always sends a love, man. Here's my kryptonite for you. You're a player in the field, but you ain't the only player in the field. Don't think in terms of I'm one of. I'm one of the hairstylists in Murfreesboro. I'm one of an insurance provider. I'm one of the coaches. How do you become the player in the interest. You're, you're not in the field, as Joe Calloway used to say. You are the field. Everybody else is trying to catch up to you. You are so forward thinking. You're so far ahead of everybody else. You're so on top of your game that your your competitors are always retreating and contracting. They're always like, dang, there he goes again, man. He come up with something new again. He's always coming up with something new. If you're going to be a POI, you got to have a POV. <laughs> That's a good one. If you're going to have a person, you're going to be a person of interest, you got to have a POV point of view. That's really what you're selling. Let me close this off here with some action items. Brandon, let's see, Shannon Priestley. Hope everybody out there. Listen, here's some opportunity for you to get coaching by me. This is what I should have said on Good Day New York. But since I didn't say it yesterday, I'm going to say it today. If you're out there and you're in a static state, and you know who I'm talking to, you're, you, you have so much more potential than what you're showing, man. You may have been dynamic. But now it's time for you. Now, now you're in static, okay? If you're out there, you got you to gotta get around somebody who can elevate your game, man. When we know better, we do better. You need, you need to be a monster producer or you need to be in my online academy or you need to come down to Florida and Seaside September 23rd through the 26th for the super retreat with the super coach. We already got, I think the first one's almost sold out, okay? I think the first one's almost sold out, 23rd through the 26th. Seaside, Florida. What a great experience. Beautiful place. Three days with me. 2500 bucks. Covers your room and board plus your lunches. you on your own for dinner. And uh, we're going to have a great experience. Or September the 27th through the 30th. Come down to Seaside and enjoy some great days mastermind with us. Or sign up for Monster Producer. Guys, I believe this. This is my point of view. I believe everybody needs a good coach in life. I believe a good coach can change your life. And I believe without a good coach, you'll always contract and retreat. Every week I come to you live, YouTube, podcast, every which way we can give it to you, we're going to give it to you because I, I believe in helping other people become people of interest. To be a POI, you got to have a POV. I'm Coach Michael Burt, every week, live from the Greatness Factory. Come on, baby. This is Super Coach. Kryptonite's the one thing holding you back. You found your talents. That's taking something complicated, making it simple. It's seeing opportunity where other people see nothing, but you don't have the courage and the confidence to take action. And until you have that courage and confidence, guys, you just stay put. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, most people have no idea what the answer to that is. Even at 40 years old, I'm still figuring it out. And, and it reminded me earlier in life,